service song because it's on my heart. <laughs> if it ain't on my heart, it's on somebody else's, so we're going to go with it. Well, I'm glad I'm serving a God who's able to deliver. I'm glad I'm serving a God who's able event 
and didn't know what even hit them. You know, because some woman stole a police car and hit them. And their grandfather died in this accident. But I'm just so glad that I'm serving a God who's able to keep us, who's able to deliver. You know, we're here in the house of the Lord this morning. I know God's here. I've already felt His presence. We just need to lift up His holy name. Yeah. Lift up our holy hands and just praise Him this morning because He's been good to us. He's been very good to us. You see, that family that got hit last night, it wasn't a very good thing. And what I know, they're lost and undone without Jesus. But you know what? We got Jesus today. We got something to praise Him for because we're alive and we're well and we made it to the house of God this morning. We just need to give Him praise and glory and honor. I know the old Atmos, the old adversary don't want us to praise God this morning, but I'm going to tell you, when you get to thinking about what God's done for you, where He's brought you from, and how many times He could have kept you from that very accident that those very people were in, oh, you want to praise God. You want to praise God because you got your child next to you and, and he's still alive. You know, I thank God that he healed Austin of cancer. I thank God he's 19 years old today that when he was 7, they said that he had a 60-40 to 60% chance of making it. But you see, he made it. He's still here today. He's 19 years old. I got something to be excited about. We need to be excited about Jesus today. He's worthy. I mean, I'm telling you, it's been a week and a half, but I still praise God. You see, when Paul and Silas got locked up behind prison bars, they didn't get in there and get in the molly grub, sit in the corner and do nothing. They got up and they began to praise God and give God all the glory and honor. And what happened? Oh, the chains, the, the place began to shake and the earth began to quake and the chains were broken and a man got saved. I'm going to tell you right now, if the devil's knocking at your door and he's trying to bring on things, there's something good about to happen in your life. There's something good about to take place in your life this morning. There's something good on its way. And I don't even want to get on the Sunday school lesson, but you know what? God is good. Give him a hand clap of praise this morning. He's worthy to be praised. I'm telling you, we in a warfare. The devil's fighting us. He don't like it. I'm going to tell you, we see the seats almost empty this morning, but the Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name, he is in the midst. The enemy may try to fight us, but he ain't going to win because, see, I read the end of the book. The devil's a liar. He loses. He's lost the battle already. So we can give God praise this morning for everything he's done for us. Even if, even if we've had a bad week, we should be able to praise God. We should be able to lift up our hands and give him all praise and glory and honor. Because I'm going to tell you, he's been knocking at... You know, the old enemy's been knocking at Sandra's door, but she said, you know what? I recognize who it was coming at my door, sis. I recognize it wasn't God. I recognize that I'm in a spiritual warfare and a spiritual battle this morning. There's some folks here this morning, you're in a spiritual battle. Oh, and you, you even feel like giving up because God doesn't show me these things. You even feel like throwing in a towel and saying, oh, what's the use anymore? But we ain't going to go into that right now. But I know somebody's here feeling that way. But I've got good news for you. God said he's fixing to turn it around and there's a new thing coming in your way. Oh, how I can't stop. Let me tell you. The anointing. You might have been praying for more anointing in your life. Don't give up. The anointing's on its way. Don't give up on God. You see, right before oh, I recognize that when the enemy comes a fighting, you see, you see what happens is, is there's something good on its way this morning. There's something good on its way. Y'all can sit down. I'm going to go ahead and go with this because I feel it in my spirit this morning. You know, before we go, I do want us to all stand this morning and honor God. I want us to all stand and come together in one mind and one accord and pray that God have His way. That Sister Sandra gets out of the way and let God have His way. Because I'm nothing without Him. I ain't even going to try to be something I'm not. But I just want God to have His way. I want to let God use me this morning to speak to y'all because I'm going to tell you, the devil is as real as God is real this morning and he's fighting our people. But let me tell you, I'm I'm a warrior for the Lord, and, and y'all are too, and we're going to get up and stand up. We're going to pray for those that's not here this morning, and we're going to pray for this service in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, Father God, as I come unto you, God, as humble as I know how, God, I'm nothing about you, Lord. Ask Lord, you to watch over all the children today, God. Morning, God. God, I thank you for God, touch each and every heart and each and every ear that's entered this house. Today. God, 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 let your will be done here, Father God. We'll praise you, Lord. God, but we're nothing without you, God. We just ask you, God, and go to with your presence, with your spirit today, God, for your word says not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, saith the Lord. Father God, 
We just pray, God, that you just send forth your spirit down into this service, God. Touching the hearts and ears, God, and eyes, Father God. God, I pray, God, your anointing just flow freely throughout this service, God. God, that you have your way in each and every one of our lives, God, in Jesus' name. We pray, Father God, today, God, that you touch those that are sick. Shut in today, God, and just help them, Father God. God, and just help them to recover, God, from the snare of the fowler, God. And we'll praise you and glorify you, Lord, and just equip us, God. God, with that which you'd have us to have, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 We're going to talk about Noah this morning. Very familiar scripture. Noah found grace. Yes, he did. Amen. We'll let everybody get seated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is good, and he's what? Good all the time. God is so good this morning. Oh, he's so good to me. I tell you, I couldn't do things that I do without God. So glad I found him one day, or he found me, and I thank God that I surrendered my all to God. You know, through this time that I've been serving the Lord, there's been struggles, there's been heartaches, there's been burdens, there's been times that that uh, I've even wanted to give up and I've wanted to quit. I wanted to just throw the towel in and say, "What's the use?" I'm not the only one because there's somebody here this morning feeling the same way. And I'm gonna tell you, every new level, there's a new devil. Every new level, there's a new devil. Take that in your spirit. Every time you begin to grow, you're going to face the enemy this morning. You're going to face the enemy in your life this morning. You're going to face the enemy in your life every day when there's a new level. Yep. I can remember when we started out the church on the square. It was just a little bitty building. and The room was half this size. Amen. And, oh, was we on fire for God. Oh, we was on fire that one night that house was so packed out. I'm going to tell you, they were standing on the sidewalk. They were standing out just just with the door open, just praising God. That's what we saw with that little building. We began to move to another building. We got to the other building. I can remember Sister Sandra wanting to throw the towel in and quit and give up. Say, why, why do this, God? Why do this, God? God, are you sure this is what you want us to do? God answered. He said, yes. He showed me many times. Yes, yes. Then we moved on over to this building. There's been times I've said, oh, I just want to quit, give up, throw the towel in, what's the use? Friday morning was an example of it. I can tell on myself because I'm me and can't nobody judge me but God. Friday morning we had prayer meeting. We have prayer meeting here every Friday morning that we possibly can. Yes, I know there's times you will not be here because you may be sick. You may not can make it to the house of God. I'm not here to beat you down, tear you down because you was not here. I'm telling about what the devil did to me this morning. I'm telling you what the devil tried to do to me, Brother George. Friday morning I got a call that everybody was going to be out of prayer meeting but about four. I thought, oh my, 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 devil, you are a liar. Let me tell you something. When there's a front, God, prayer is what keeps us. Prayer is what keeps the church. Prayer is what keeps your family together. The old saying goes, the family that prays, that prays together stays together. That is so true. If you pray together, you're going to stay together because if you got if you're praying and letting God lead, then you're going to be all right. But I'm going to tell you Friday morning, I'm going to get on this. I'm telling this for a reason. Friday morning, I got so aggravated. I said, "What's the use?" Why? I said, the devil was telling me, and I'm telling you this for a reason. The devil was planting in my mind. Why go? What's the use? See what happened? You didn't go Wednesday night, so they think they ain't got to come Friday morning. That's what he was telling me. And he was telling me, oh, what's the use? Why go? Why pray? 
I recognize what I was entertaining, Brother Johnny. I recognize that that was not God, that that was a spirit from the devil wanting me to throw in the towel and give up. I want to tell you today that this walk it may is a long walk. Sometimes this walk ain't going to be nobody but you and Jesus. And sometimes this walk ain't going to be nobody but you feeling like it's just you. Even though Jesus is right there with you, it's going to feel like you're all alone. And that's kind of how I felt Friday morning was I was all alone. But God began to remind me of Noah about how Noah had to build an ark. Noah, God gave Noah a word from him. He said, Noah, and I'm paraphrasing, go out and build an ark because I'm going to, I command you to go out because see, Noah was a righteous man in God's eyes. And he told Noah, he said, go out and build me an ark because there's going to come a flood upon this earth 40 days and 40 nights. So Noah being the righteous man of God who he was, he believed God. He believed that God had gave him a word, and the word was to build an ark. Okay, God. so Noah goes out, he gets up to go for wood, he begins to build the ark. I think it was 70 years, anybody know the correct? Something like that. So many years, it was a lot of years that Noah was building this ark. It didn't happen overnight, it didn't happen in a week, it didn't happen in a year, it didn't happen in five years. I think it was about 70 years that Noah had to endure and build an ark. Did he not, Brother George? He had to build an ark because he got a word from God. He got a word to build an ark because there was coming a great flood on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. So God, Noah got out and began to build that ark. And as he was out there, and I'm paraphrasing this story, but it's still the same meaning. And he was building that ark, and I'm going to tell you, there was some discouraged earth coming by, wasn't it, Brother Johnny? They come by laughing at him, telling him he was crazy. Why are you building an ark? We ain't had rain in days. Why are you building an ark, Noah? I believe Noah's response would have been because God told me to. God told me to have prayer meeting here on Friday morning at 10 o'clock every Friday. There's been such a, a, a battle against that. Not with the enemy trying to stop it. The enemy's going to try to stop you from doing the, what God has told you to do. God has gave some people word, a word in this house. But because of discouragement... Because of feeling like you can't do it. Ooh, shandana, because of what people have said about you. Yeah. You won't do what God's told you to do. I feel the Holy Ghost strong in this house. There's something that you need to do that God's told you to do. Because you see, if Noah hadn't have done what God told him to do, when that flood come up on the earth, Noah would have perished with his family also. But because Noah believed God, even though it was kind of strange to go out and build an ark in the middle of a dry land, he still believed and heard a word from God and said, I'm going to do it, God. I'm going to do what you told me to do. So many times, Sister Diane, the enemy's come along and told me to quit doing what God's told me to do. Not that anybody meant to hurt me Friday. Not that anybody could, you know, you know, you couldn't be here. That's fine. That's between you and God. But I'm just telling you what the enemy will do. He was planting seeds in my mind to quit and give up. He was planting those seeds. And guess what, Sister Shirley? If I kept on entertaining those, those seeds, those thoughts in my mind, guess what would have happened? See, it starts in your mind. And then it gets down in you. And the more you hear it, the more you hear it, the more you entertain it, the more thinking on it you do, the more you're going to act out on it and do exactly what the enemy wants you to do. This morning, there's somebody here. You've been having some thoughts, some ungodly thoughts, some thoughts that God's not pleased with. This is hard. I don't know why God chooses me to do the hard stuff. But I'm going to say this morning, those thoughts you're entertaining are angels unaware. We have to be careful to what we entertain in our mind. Because I'm going to tell you, when we give it place in our mind, it's going to eventually get in our heart. You see, when David, <laughs> David committed adultery, and he went on the rooftop and he saw the naked woman, which was Bathsheba, and he looked upon her, and he lusted after her, he was sinning. So David thought upon those things, didn't he? 
And the more he thought upon those things, the more those things got into his spirit. And when they got into his spirit, they just caused him to commit murder. He committed a lot of sins because he took thought upon something he shouldn't have been thinking about. He shouldn't have been thinking about that naked woman. And there's also someone here dealing with lust today. Whew, that was hard. I have to obey. You know, sin is the reason the flood came upon the earth. It was wicked. It was sinful. So God brought the flood. But he found one righteous man named Noah. The devil don't like this. I can feel it coming at me. Woo. Thank you, Jesus, anyway. But you know, Noah decided Noah was going to obey God. See, the more the Bible says we will reap what we sow. If we sow good thoughts to our mind, we're going to reap good. If we sow those bad things and bad seeds, and you know a seed can be planted in your mind by, uh, by someone. So, I mean, someone, let's just use it as an example because this is a big thing in the churches today. It's just a big, big thing. Did you see so-and-so? She didn't even shake my hand. Who does she think she is? She thinks she's holier than thou. You plant that in somebody's mind, one seed like that in somebody. Or do you know she's there to destroy the church? The next thing you're going to be doing is you're going to be watching that person and the devil's going to talk to you a little bit more and then they're going to come around again on that telephone line and they're going to try to try to feed that seed some more and the next thing you know you've got controversy, you've got division in your church. That's how the devil works. He plants bad seeds. It starts in your mind. But the good news is no matter how the enemy comes and tells us to quit and to give up, as I'm sure as Noah was building that ark, he had thoughts of quitting. I guarantee he did. He had thoughts of giving up. I'm sure he did. Because I've been in this thing for, for how many years and, and y'all been in it much longer than me and there's been thoughts I know you've had about quitting and giving up. But what is there to go back to? What is there back yonder to go back to? But if we don't quit and give up and we keep on keeping on, in due season, we're going to reap if we faint not. You know, there's been some here praying for a greater anointing. Oh, what a devil's been after you because you're praying for a greater anointing. But if you do not, if you do not reap, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, if you do not faint, you're going to reap in due season. You're going to reap exactly that very thing you're praying about. When I was spending time with the Lord, it was like the Lord was saying, someone's season is just around the corner. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't give up. Don't give in. Keep on building. Keep on praying. Keep on praising. Keep on coming to church. Keep on standing on His promises. Do not think your season is just around the corner. It may be a greater anointing. It may be a, 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 a greater boldness in your life. It may be something that you've been at, maybe your, your, your family to be saved, but don't give up. Don't give up. You see, Noah didn't give up. He kept on what? He kept on building the boat. He kept on building the ark. He kept on going because he knew what he had heard from God. He had got a word to keep to build an ark because there was a great flood coming and Noah kept doing it. No matter, during the years that he was building this ark, he had found discouragement. He found heartaches. He found burdens in his life. He found all these things that the enemy would come along and put in his path to stop him from building the ark. But he didn't give up and he didn't give in. And guess what? In due season, he reaped, didn't he? He reaped the, his family. He reaped being saved. He reaped that his family was saved. He reaped life. He didn't die, did he? That's the same way in the spiritual realm. We faint not, we're going to reap. We're going to reap in due season. And there's a season right around the corner. You see, no matter how the enemy throws things at us, 
We just got to keep on keeping on. Just this Friday morning, the enemy told me to quit and give up. I'm so glad, Brother Johnny, I came on. I thought if I have to stand alone, I'm a coming. If I have to go pray by myself, I'm a coming. I knew I went by myself because I had Erica. She was with me. But you know, nothing, nothing, this ain't throat toward nobody that didn't come. So the devil's a liar this morning. I promise you. I love you. It's just that I'm going to tell you what it, you know, God lets us go through things so we can help those that are having a hard time and they're hanging on by thread. There's some here this morning, you're hanging on by thread. You're hanging on with all you've got. Don't give up. Don't give in. Keep on keeping on. Just as Noah kept on building that ark, he received his reward by his family being saved. He, was, he had a promise from God. Just keep on keeping on. Don't give up this morning. Don't give up. Just keep on. The enemy comes to plant those seeds so we will give up. So we won't endure. But I believe this morning that if you're dealing with those things that was called out, it's not my place to judge you. It's not my place to call you out by name. God did not give me a face but of one person this morning. And I'm going to tell you, it's not my job to de deliver you. It's God's job. But I'm going to tell you, it's time that we repent of our sins. And repenting means to, to turn away from it. Turn away from it. Don't go back to it. Because you see, what, what happens is when we give thought to a, a little seed like, like David did, it grows and it grows into a bigger, you know, a bigger and bigger seed. And I seen Jensen Franklin this morning. I, I, I was half asleep, but I heard him preaching. And he used a great example about donuts. You know, we want to lose weight, but if we, we keep eating donuts every morning, what, what's going to happen? You may not see it right there when you eat the donut. You don't see that the weight come on. But as you keep eating donuts, every, oh, eat them every morning for breakfast and every night for supper, oh, eventually you're going to what? Reap weight, right? So if you keep sinning, you're going to keep, you know, you're going to keep reaping. You're going to keep sinning. And it's going to grow and grow and grow just as David did. Just as David did by committing adultery, and then he he also murdered her husband. And they lost their child because of sin. And in the day of Noah, that was what was happening. Sin was running rapid. So God had to do something about it. But this morning, if you're dealing with those things, I don't know how the Lord wants me to do this. I really don't know what to do other than to tell you that if you're dealing with things or thoughts, Bible says to cast down those thoughts and imaginations, imaginations. Cast down the thoughts and imaginations against God. What are those things? Can anybody tell me what some of those things are this morning? I'm gonna let y'all y'all interact this morning. Just, can anybody tell me what those some thoughts may be that 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 are against God? Lust. Lust. Envy. Envy. Jealousy. Strife. Strife. Pride. Ooh. Doubt. Huh? Doubt. Doubt. All those things. Fear. Fear. Ooh, what's a big one? Fear. Things that we should cast down. We should trust God. We should cast down thoughts against our brothers and our sisters. I'm going to tell you. We wonder how we get in a mess. Start having thoughts about, about your brothers or your sister. Start letting them grow because it starts as a seed of thought Amen. and then it'll grow if you keep entertaining it. See, we keep entertaining that thought just as I've kept entertaining the thought of quitting, giving up, forget it, what's the use, blah, blah, blah. But you know what, God, you know what, I casted that thought down. I said, I rebuke you, devil. You ain't going to torment me today. And I said, I'm going to have a good day in the name of the Lord. I went straight from the my front of my house to the, back of, to the back of my house where my restroom was. And let me tell you, God gave me a word, Brother Johnny. He gave me a word. He gave, reminded me of Noah. He said Noah had to build an ark. And Noah had, uh, he, he reminded me of how Noah had to probably stand alone a lot of times and had to build that ark and keep building and building and building and building and building and building. And that's what God wants us to do today. He wants us to keep building and building and building and building and building. Because see, we are a building. We are a temple of the Holy Ghost. We should, we should keep building for God's kingdom. And we should not let nothing then stop us from building for God's kingdom. Either you are a vessel of honor or you're a vessel of dishonor. This morning, if you're a vessel of honor, that means you're out, you're working for God, you're doing all you can for the kingdom of God, you're witnessing the people, but if you're a vessel of dishonor, you're out so in discord, talking about your brother, your sister, you ain't trying to win nobody to God, you don't care if they go to heaven or hell, 
You know, I was watching uh, something come up on uh, my Facebook about Miley Cyrus. I don't watch the awards at all, but uh, when it come up, I thought, what has Miley Cyrus done? Miley Cyrus is a girl that my children have looked up to for years. I'm going to tell you, I got a little curious. I went to the, to, the, to the little site and I looked it up and I couldn't believe my eyes on what Miley Cyrus had done. Miley Cyrus had at one time proclaimed that she loved God. She even said it on her TV shows how she believed in God and she loved God. She was a Christian, but something happened, Stephen. Something happened in her life that made her become who she is now. It was, it's called sin. You see, what happened was Miley used to be a good little girl, but now, as a, as a, and I was telling the ladies this Friday, you know, Miley Cyrus has entertained the enemy. And on her body, she's got uh, tattoos of, of symbols of satanic worship. She's got symbols. I could not believe my eyes. And I said, oh, Lord. And the Lord showed me that for a reason. I told the ladies at, at prayer meeting, I said, y'all pray for Miley Cyrus and her family. And I want y'all to do that too. But God has put it on my heart to pray for her because not just that she's a soul, which is the most important of all, but she's a soul. She is a person of dishonor right now. She's out there and she's showing the world. I mean, if you listen to her song, I mean, that song she sings, talking about going in the bathroom, doing a line of cocaine and popping a molly, which is a which is a drug of ecstasy. I mean, all these things that Miley Cyrus, the little girl that, that my kids grew up watching and listening to her songs, has now become a vessel of dishonor for God. Hannah Montana. Hannah Montana. That's who she was. That's right, Brother George. But it's sad that I, when I looked at her family, and I seen how the enemy has come in and just practically destroyed them because of sin. Because of a little bit of sin that entered in. Somewhere down the line. Her brother's gothic. It's sad. It's sad. I mean, it just tore my, my heart up. But it tore my heart up to know that there are still young people out there watching her looking and, and her. looking up to her. And, and these songs, see, what you feed in your spirit is going to come out. You feed your spirit those songs, oh, buddy, it don't faint. Just like Jensen Franklin was talking about her this morning. It kind of shocked me. I don't know if you watched watched him, but he was talking about her. And, 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 and you know, I, he must have seen the same thing I did because, you know, uh, she's out here singing these songs and our children, we got to be careful what our children listen to because what our children listen to, it's going to get in them. I'm telling you, it's going to get in them. It may not get in them overnight, but it's going to eventually get in them. We have to be on guard for our children, who they run around with, what they're doing. we got to keep, keep, keep an eye on them because you see these things in the world, the enemy's after our children. And, and, and I want to see Miley Cyrus say it because she would be a great inspiration to these young people. Yeah. But in a good way, not the bad way. Right now, she's dishonored. She's a being a, a vessel of dishonor by, you know, just her life. But something's gotten hold of her, and I want to see God change her. Yeah. See, sin will take you further than you ever want to go. I know this wasn't easy, and I probably got rejected, but that's okay. I'm going to dust my feet off, and I'm going to move on, and, and thank God that, that He gave me boldness to stand and to do His will, and and to obey because that's what we all need. We need to obey God and, and do His will with all that's in us. And don't give up. Don't quit. Keep building for God. Um, your breakthrough is right around the corner. I believe with all my heart, God said your season is right around the corner. Somebody's season is right around the corner. The enemy's been holding you back too long. you got to just let go of the enemy, move forward, and let God do what He wants to do in your life. You see, because He's wanting to do something in... In, in our lives today. In my life, in your life, see, if I'd let the enemy hold me back, I wouldn't be doing what God wants me to do. I'd be sitting home on Friday mornings doing nothing or cleaning house, which is putting that before God, putting my house before God. We can't do that. God said He'd be first. He would not be second in our lives. But I just want to say I love each and every one of you. Y'all love me? Man. If you don't, you better repent. <laughs> <laughs> but you know God's word's alive and well and it's true and, and it ain't to come and condemn you it's to come and correct you it's to come and help you grow in God it's to come and let you see that God hears your prayers because see when someone's up here speaking for God it ain't it ain't Sister Sandra judging you or looking at you because I don't know what you do when you leave here I don't know what you go home and do I have no clue but God does and God knows what you've been praying about and asking for and He knows all things so so don't don't look at it as it's Sister Sandra because it ain't it's God And and but remember if you heard anything good out of this today that that uh, God is uh, there's a new season right around the corner for you for you this morning don't let the enemy hold you back from what God's got for you 
Don't listen to his lies. Don't take heed to the thoughts that he tells you. Don't, don't listen to him when he says give up and give in. Don't listen to him because see, God has something great in store for his people. Whether it be the great anointing that you've been praying about, or whether it be the great the, the boldness, or whether it be the gifts of the Spirit working in your life, or whether it be you stepping out a little deeper in the water, or whether it be you just holding the door in the sanctuary, or, or greeting people, whatever it may be, just keep on because God has something in store for you. And He is and He is a God that does not lie. And you can believe what God says. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I just feel it in my spirit that I, you know, I've said some things this morning that this convicted me this morning. I think we ought to come to the altar. And anybody that wants to, just pray and ask God for the rest of this service, you know, to, to forgive us and, and to. I just thought God would. Amen. 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 So. I was waiting on the Lord because He gave me no direction. says, thank you for obeying the Lord because you've obeyed the Lord this morning. I, I feel the Spirit. You know, if you got something, I'm not to judge you. I, Sister Sandra said things. Friday morning, I said some things. Not that they were nasty words or nothing like that, but thoughts. Thoughts that I shouldn't have been even letting come. Because, you know, things that come out of your mouth, the enemy hears those very things you say. And that's what the words to do is to come and convict. Because God wants to build up the house. He wants to build your house up, your temple up. So this morning, if you've got something you're dealing with, come and give it to God. Come, Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed of God. Don't be ashamed that if you come up here this morning and you ask God to forgive you of those things, don't be ashamed of it. Just give it to God. Give it to God this morning. Just listen. The Lord's dealing with you to move this morning. Just move. Be obedient. Be obedient this morning.
And God will hear your prayers, amen. We need to pray about this, amen. Anybody else with prayer request, praise report, or testimony this morning? Amen. I just want to say about that deal you talked about, brother. Uh, that's that's us going all over the Middle East. And uh, they are overthrowing the devils and they're replacing them with even worse devils. So, I mean, it's going to be. You look at the Bible prophecy, let me tell you what, if you don't believe in God, you should take a look, look at what's going on there. And then read your Bible. Let me tell you, it, it is uncanny. It's scary, but in the same time, we know the Lord's coming. Yes, He is. That's the truth. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So let's uh, do our part and pray. Amen. Amen. That's what we can do. Uh, praise the Lord this morning. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Amen. Amen. <laughs>